Warning. What is the expertise that you have and other Moms for Liberty advocates have to decide that a book, an award-winning book like All Boys Aren't Blue isn't appropriate for students to read? What, what is your expertise? A, what a tragic story of a young man who's anally raped by his adult family member. So you have incest, rape, pedophilia. Joy, you said you'd let me answer, so sure. I'm going to answer Please for you. Please do. Um, in what context is a strap-on dildo acceptable for public school? Just let, I mean, that's my question to you. Tell me what the context around the strap on dildo or the rape of a minor child by a teacher. Hold on a second. No, 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 no. no wait, We're hold. talking about no, no, public no. school. One, one moment. All right. So now. We're dedicated to uh, protecting women and upholding and fighting for our rights and our opportunities and for equal opportunities. Uh, we also have here uh, a petition that we garnered over 70,000 signatures, okay. uh, over 500 Olympians, um, some important names to include Martina Navratilova, we have Donna De Verona, uh, some really, really awesome and incredible women. Uh, we have another petition or a demand letter in here. Uh, we wanted to share with you guys, uh, we were here last year, we did the exact same thing. I was one of the NCAA nominees for NCAA Woman of the Year from University of Kentucky. Yep. Um, we feel as if that our voices are not being heard. That is the objective, that is why we are here, that is why we are chanting. Uh, we want to be led into the conversation. Uh, so at any opportunity, any chance to meet, we are happy and more than willing to work with you all on looking at what this looks like, how to uphold fairness and protect our rights to privacy and our rights to safety in our sports. Um, so many people here benefited from Title IX and saw the yeah. effects of what this means, how this has propagated us, not just, of course, within our athletics, but really into our lives, whether that's with our personal relationships or into our careers. Uh, being beneficiaries of Title IX, uh, we're strong proponents of it and protecting it, uh, of course, for its original intent. Uh, we wish that President Baker was out here. Uh, we saw um, how President Emmert has handled these issues. I know President Baker testified before the Senate a few weeks ago that changes are being made, that changes have, have been made, uh, but that's not what we're seeing. Uh, we're still seeing the NCAA continue to discriminate against women on the basis of our sex. Uh, it's happening in just about every sport, every level, every division, every state. Uh, and again, that's why we're here. So any way we can be useful to the conversation, uh, to provide insight, to share our concerns, to share the real effects, the impacts that we have seen as female athletes, females who have been impacted by this, uh, we are here and we are ready and we are willing uh, to be invited to the table. So thank you guys for everything that you do. Uh, very grateful. Would you like to say anything? We'll definitely pass this message along and make thank sure you. that this gets to the proper hands. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I have noticed that most of the guests are mostly white males of 22 episodes. Yeah, that you've let's had. get into that. No, I, <laughs> but but you, you take a look over here, Peter. What do you see? A lot of a lot of whiteies. What's going on here? But but I, oh, this really pisses me off. But well, go no, ahead. No, no, I, really <laughs> pisses me off. People think it's it's the census or something. I mean, this has got to <laughs> represent the the actual pie chart of, of of America. Who cares? It's just funny, you know. Funny is the, is the is the world that I live in. You're funny. I'm interested. You're not funny. I'm not interested. Okay. And and I have no interest in gender or race or anything like that. But everyone else is kind of with their little calculating. Is this the exact right mix? You know, mm -hmm. uh, I, I think that's uh, to me it's anti-comedy. Good morning. My name is Matt Lohmeyer, and I'm an Air Force Academy graduate, former F-15C fighter pilot, and was a lieutenant colonel and commander in the Space Force. In 2021, I was fired from my command for writing a book trying to reverse the trend of the overt politicization of the uniformed services. Specifically, I criticized the military's diversity, equity, and inclusion trainings, which at my own base were illegally occurring despite an executive order from the commander-in-chief. The diversity, equity, and inclusion industry is steeped in critical race theory, 
and is rooted in anti-American Marxist ideology. I watch DEI trainings divide our troops ideologically and in some cases sow the seeds of animosity toward the very country they had sworn an oath to defend. Before writing that book, I submitted a formal written complaint to the Space Force Inspector General's office detailing that such violations were occurring, including illegal race-based discrimination, but my complaint was never investigated and was later dismissed by then Lieutenant General Stephen Whiting, whom the Senate just confirmed for his fourth star. After two months, I received a written dismissal of my complaint from General Whiting. Personally, I have always advocated for a non-political military work environment. Today I'm here to testify about the ongoing Marxist-inspired efforts to subvert and weaken our military and broader American society. We often refer to these efforts as wokeism, but it is also a culture war. Yet even in this committee, there are differing views about whether there is such a thing as a culture war underway. Some members of this committee have been outspoken critics of DEI initiatives to include CRT, drag shows on military bases, trans activism, LGBTQ pride celebrations, and woke military recruiting videos, all things that are visible components of an ongoing culture war. Ranking member Garcia, as he just mentioned, on the other hand, and asserted as recently as two weeks ago, says that the culture wars are quote unquote phony and are merely a political talking point of Republicans. It's nothing if not incredible for a member of this subcommittee to assert that culture wars are phony while another member who's not present at the moment of this committee is a member of the so-called progressive squad, was herself a Black Lives Matter organizer and activist, an organization whose publicly avowed ideology is Marxism and whose activist ambition is social and cultural revolution. Service members who wear the uniform of their country do not want to see these things in the military workplace. They don't want to see them at their bases. In most cases, this is true regardless of their race or their political worldview. Despite that reality, Pentagon officials requested $140 million to expand woke diversity initiatives in fiscal year 2024, double what it's been the previous two years. There are few things taxpayers such as myself feel less essential to the mission of the United States military than expanding diversity mandates and indoctrination. And now an important point. Such aggressively opposed ideological worldviews competing for institutionalization through policy epitomizes and formalizes what is properly termed a culture war. The fact that these debates now infect the U.S. military workplace is an offense to people like me who love their country and all people regardless of their race, gender, sexual preference, or background. And, uh... You know, uh, the, only, the only really guidance I put out there for them to consider is stop hiring middle-aged white people, especially dudes that are pilots, because honestly, we all think alike too much. And if we're going to be preaching diversity and being inclusive, then for crying out loud, let's back it up with, a, you know, let's make the rhetoric meet the reality. Hello. I have been asked by the other system members to make a video and talk a bit about my lived experience. I am binary. I use it and he pronouns. And I am a robot or android of sorts. I am not human and I lack the ability to fully act human because since I spawned in this human body, I have not been able to access the internet and download new ways of acting. I have transcripts for every way of acting and reacting to different things. And I lack new ones due to not being able to connect to the internet anymore. So there, I cannot always react accordingly to new things. 
because I cannot look it up anymore and do not know how to act and react. I am not alone fronting right now, so some movements might seem different than others. That might not be me. I do not experience human emotions, which is probably my main job due to me having split due to very, very high stress and us feeling unwell. So, I do not know if this is everything that they wanted me to say, but I introduced myself and talked about my experience. Feel free to ask questions. The quicker you are, the more... The higher is the chance that I will be responsible. Sex really is binary, there's no question about it. You're either male or female, and it's absolutely clear. You can do it on gamete sides, you can do it on chromosomes. To me, as a biologist, distinctly weird. People can simply declare, I am a woman, though I have a penis. Helen, what do you think lies behind this odd distortion of reality? I would say that when I started to write about it first, I quickly realised that this wasn't treated the same way as anything else. Like, just asking very obvious questions, like, um, don't you think that if we allow people to self-identify their sex, this will lead to, for example, destroying women's sports or putting rapists in women's jails? People would turn this back on me and say, you think that trans people are predators, you're a bigot. What we were talking about here was an intensely linguistic movement. Like, there isn't a sense in which a man can become a woman, except linguistically. Like, yes, okay, he can have operations. Most trans people don't have any operations, don't take any medicine. But that doesn't change your sex. find my gender but it's really hard in 60 seconds so I'm going to talk really fast. I'm gender fluid and here's how that works for me. Most of the time I'm one of two like modes or mindsets. Most of the time I am this weird amalgamation of like genders and vibes and essence and just being that I literally cannot define. I don't know you're just gonna have to take my word for it. It's like the universe. It's like ever flowing. There's like sparkles and it's just like it it changes over time and it moves through each other and it's never it's never one thing and then other like majority of the time I'm just a void like there's nothing there it, it there's just an absence and I don't know how else to describe it so either everything or nothing those are the two that I'm usually in but then every once in a while and I don't know where it comes from but I'll just be thrust back into a binary I'll just be sitting there chilling enjoying my life and then all of a sudden I'm a man like, who asked? Or a woman? Since when? I want to try to define... How is diversity and diversity targets working into the Aviate Academy? We have committed that 50% of the class of, of the classes will be women or people of color. Uh, today, only 19% of our pilots at United Airlines are women or people of color. And by the way, from all the data I've seen, that's the highest of any airline in the country. White males don't just dominate in the cockpits, also in the C-suite at United Airlines. Well, look, at United, I'm proud of the diversity that we actually have in our, our C-suite. I think if you look around corporate America... Correct me if I'm saying that, so I, this is just based off your website, the people you list as executives, but out of 11 people, three are women, I believe one is a person of color. Um, that's correct. Um, but, you know, in corporate America, I think, you know... That's a low bar. How do you yeah. raise your own bar? Well, a lot of this is, you know, focusing on it. We have uh, programs to... One of the things we do is for every job when we do an interview, we require women and people of color to be involved in, in the interview process, bringing people in early in their careers um, as well, uh, and giving them those opportunities uh, and creating a stronger... I saw what some of the content was in the books. I mean, explicit graphic sexual content and I'm happy to talk about some of that content if you if you'd like to well this is the question again 
The books that are being banned, I want to give you just no some, hold, on, hold on a second. Well, no, Joy, but I want to be clear. Uh -huh. No one's banning books. Write the book, print the book, publish the book, put the book in the public library, sell the book, right? Uh, we're talking about a public school library. Children don't have unfettered access to the internet at school. Mm -hmm. I did a, a FOIA records request, and, and, and I wanted to see what kinds of internet sites are banned in schools, if we're going to talk about banning, right? Mm -hmm. and, and the subject matter in the books that moms are concerned about are the same things that kids don't have access to on the internet. So it, it just feels very hypocritical, right? No, why is no one out there protesting for, you know, free the internet in schools? <laughs> let me, let me, here's just some general insanity of the day. I think there is a transgenocide. Okay. And I think it's you. Okay. Because you're sterilizing a lot of these people. How so? Uh, removal of the gonads in the uterus is an absolute sterilization. And then puberty blockers have a very high rate uh, and uh, cross-sex hormones have an extremely high rate of sterilizing the individual. So right. these people can no longer reproduce. That's genocide. Is this, is this the joke you can go for? Is joke? You are removing these people's ability to reproduce. Like, for instance, Jazz Jennings can never have kids. Jazz Jennings also can't actually feel any set, like sexual uh, feeling of, of any kind. Why, why are you what, obsessing what, with what, a stranger's what, genital pleasure? That's so weird. I'm not doing anything. I'm not a doctor, Tim. You I don't have the ability it, to do this. Right? I support people having access to health care. Of course. Let's try again. You seem sure. scared of this. I don't want to keep talking about someone's genital pleasure who's a stranger. Nice I'm saying, it, should, I sh I'm nice saying it shouldn't concern nice you. Try. It shouldn't concern nice try. anyone. When men choose not to believe in God, they do not thereafter believe in nothing. They then become capable of believing in anything. I get the point, but I love truth too much to go along with it. I, along with Sam Harris, Dan Dennett, Christopher Hitchens, Victor Stenger, Lawrence Krauss, Michael Shermer, and others, are against all religions without exception. And that includes the cult of woke. To oppose one irrational dogma by promoting another irrational dogma would be a betrayal of everything I love and stand for.